So we're ready to unbox our new core. I don't know what number tent this is. Ten person. Ten person tent. We thought last year we really wanted to get a core tent that had the full fly on it, and we couldn't find one anywhere. And as we were cruising Amazon a couple weeks ago, I couldn't believe it, but I saw one. And so I called Adrian over and we ordered it right away. And as you can see from the box on the side, we got number 27 <laughs> they sent out. So uh, happy to grab it. Hopefully it'll be as easy to set up and as tough as our last one. There she is. Whoa! <laughs> All right. One yeah. of the things that we uh, were interested in this tent, so this is not the super fast one with the poles that you just pop up. This one actually has the normal shock poles type, but we were interested in it because the pack dimensions are a lot smaller. Our own one. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah. That's the big difference. It's like... We're trying to pack up that little tiny UTV. That's a big deal. I think the dimensions are really similar. How many person was that one? Nine. Nine. It says it fits two queens, sleeps nine. It's 14 feet by nine. I think this one is 10, 10 feet by 14. So we had some audio difficulties while we were recording our video. So I'm just gonna narrate over our video here, walk you through the setup of this tent. Comes in a bag, as you saw, the bag is decent. Seems like it's fairly well put together. I wouldn't expect it to withstand extreme abuse. There's a whole bunch of poles, uh, several kind of shot cord standard tent poles. And then of course, because this is a straight wall tent, it has some real heavy duty steel poles, which are going to hold up the sides. People haven't noticed already because we're talking about camping, it's like clouding up. Yeah, do you notice that? It looks like it's gonna rain now. And we have, look at this, look at this. We have vultures overhead. Oh my gosh. Look at that, they're circling. <laughs> they go. The first time setting up the tent, you're really not sure what poles go where, so it takes a little bit of time. But after we put it up once, it was actually pretty straightforward. There's three poles that hold up the roof. The first is gray in color, it's a little shorter, and that just goes straight across the tent. It feeds in through a sleeve. And then there are two other black poles that go diagonally across the tent. All three of them cross in the center, and each of them fits into a plastic junction piece that then connects to the respective straight wall poles that hold up the walls of the tent. There are a total of six of these heavier duty poles that hold up the walls of the tent. They fit into the same connector pieces that the roof poles fit into at the top. And then this pin slips up inside the bottom of those heavy duty uh, wall poles and everything holds together. It's pretty, pretty straightforward when you actually see it. After you have the roof up and the straight wall poles all assembled on each of the ends of the tent, there are two more collapsible poles which get put together and those hold up the ends of the tent as you can see here. The tent itself then has some plastic clips attached to it. Those clip to the wall poles themselves. This gives you a total of five collapsible tent poles which are used to basically hold up the shape of the roof and then the six heavier duty metal poles which hold up the walls of the tent. After you have all the poles put up, the basic structure of the tent up, of course, we then have the fly. The fly is huge. It's much bigger than our nine person core tent. And of course, part of the reason is because the fly on that tent didn't go all the way to the ground. So there's much more material here. It's definitely a little trickier to put up just because of the size of it. Now I'm six feet, four inches tall, and you can see this tent is quite a bit larger than me. So if you're short, this might be difficult to put up yourself. You're definitely gonna wanna have two people. Uh, but you know, the flip side of that is it's a really nice tall tent and even somebody like me can stand up inside of it. The easiest way to line this up is to find the orange guy lines and then just make sure each of those is positioned where one of the wall poles is. This will ensure that the fly lines up with the body of the tent. There are a couple openings for doors and another opening or two actually at the ends for windows. 
There are two final poles you have to insert to finish your setup here. These poles both actually hold up part of the fly. They basically create this arch over the doorways, which is nice. It creates a small vestibule where you can you know, store shoes or other pieces of gear. And these poles just simply slide in through a sleeve underneath the fly. And then the ends pop into these rivets that are attached to the main body of the tent. One thing about any tent that you seem to buy these days that just doesn't impress me is the stakes that it comes with. It has these pretty inexpensive, cheap, small wire stakes. I pretty much just throw these in the trash with whatever tent they come with. I understand why they put them in there. They're inexpensive. It would add a lot of cost probably to put good quality tent stakes in there. And frankly, you know, we use different types of stakes depending on what type of terrain or soil we are camping in. One thing about this tent is it requires a lot of stakes if you want to get everything staked down, including the tent, the fly, there's lots of shot cords and pieces like that for the fly to hook onto, depending how you want to set it up. So all in all, you are looking at about two dozen stakes if you want to get everything staked down. The tent also comes with a couple patches, which is nice. We did not set up the internal divider. It has a large divider so you can actually split the tent into two pieces. We didn't bother setting that up. Probably not something we're going to use a lot. So stepping inside the tent, we found it was tremendously roomy. It was very large and it felt quite a bit larger than our nine person tent. Now the dimensions show that it is the same length but it is a foot wider than our core instant nine person tent and it is quite a bit taller. Here in the 10 person, I actually have quite a bit of room that I can walk around, not even standing in the middle of the tent and I have great headroom. So it's extremely tall. It feels considerably larger than our nine person instant core tent. The tent has several inside pockets hanging off of the walls where you could put a phone, keys, water bottle, some small things like that so they're not sitting on the floor. There are several windows inside which uh, zip open from the inside. Now if you have the fly all the way down you will have to go outside to unzip the full fly and roll it up. So when we're setting up this tent I think we will generally leave those end flaps open unless we really expect bad weather or it's going to be exceptionally cold then we may leave them down. So this way you can have fresh air just by unzipping the window without having to worry about stepping outside and rolling up the fly. So that's the first look at our new core straight wall 10 person tent. You know, we don't get anything from core. They haven't sent us any discounts or sent us anything for free. This is completely a tent that we've chosen on our own. We had great luck with the nine person quick setup tent and and we're excited to try out this 10 person tent here in a couple weeks when we do our first side by side overlanding adventure of the year. So if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. We've got some pretty cool adventures coming up that we want to share with you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.